I'm live. Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nice to see you today on this wonderful Mother's Day. Uh, praise God. We are thankful to be in God's house. And uh, Alexander and my wife, myself, we had a, just a wonderful time of prayer this morning. Just such a sweet presence of God. And, uh, amen. Praise God. I just love you and I appreciate you today. And, uh, why don't we just uh, begin by uh, loving Jesus, okay? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for all your kindness. Thank you for all your mercies to us, Lord. Thank you for what you've done, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We do appreciate you, Lord. We thank you for your kindness, God. We bless the wonderful name of Jesus. Let our minds be on you today, Lord. Let our minds dwell upon you this morning, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, praise God, praise God. Let me do some more this. Praise God, in the name of Jesus. Just give me a moment, folks, if you would. I, I couldn't do this until everybody got the link. Praise God. Praise God, praise God. Are we good? We got the link? Can you see it? Do you see it? Praise God. Amen. Amen. We're good, Brother Alexander? Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God, you are so good. You are so good. Praise God. Go right up there. No, down a couple, down a couple. Next one, I think that takes it off. We'll try the next one. No, I, I don't know what's wrong because normally that doesn't say the same thing it normally says in there. Take those middle things normally take that slider there and see if that's it. Because normally that's just it always just says the screen. It does. That's the one that's gonna show. This one? Uh-huh. Okay, there you go. Okay, look on your phone. Amen. Got me. Okay. Praise God. Sorry, folks. Uh, incredible amount of technical difficulties. And the good news is all three of us messed up. Praise God. So I don't feel so bad. Amen, amen, amen. I don't know if you heard us pray just a little while ago or not. Uh, uh, probably not. So somebody... Somebody text my wife to be sure that we that everybody is that you're receiving this. Okay, let's do that. Beautiful, praise God, Amen. So, well, let's let's start all over again. We won't blame this on the fathers. Okay, Hallelujah, God, just please help us today, Lord. Just please help us, Lord. We love you, we praise you, we give you glory, we give you honor, we glorify your wonderful name. Thank you so much for this day, what this day represents, what this day means, oh God. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise, Jesus. 
Blessed be the name of the Most High God. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. And uh, uh, amen. Praise God. I mentioned uh, earlier, was not picked up by a soon. We just had a wonderful time of prayer in this place today. And uh, Alexander, myself, my sister Adams, and I appreciate the presence of the Lord today. And uh, uh, I'll be honest, I, I, uh, when I got to the house of God today, anyway, the more we begin to pray, the more I begin to look forward to this service. But I, I want to I wanna mention something to you if I can. And and, and I, I want to be very sensitive today. I don't ever recall uh, feeling uh, quite like I have felt uh, uh, this last week, especially uh, concerning this Mother's Day that we have uh, begun to celebrate. And uh, I want to say to you from the bottom of my heart, Happy Mother's Day. And as I was praying for our moms this week, for some reason, uh, this year, a lot of it probably has to do with the pandemic and life not being normal. But this year especially, my heart has uh, went out to those uh, moms that no longer have their mothers with them on this earth. And I know it's a sensitive situation. Just trust trust your pastor today, okay? I I feel like what I gotta say is gonna be good and positive, and I wanna I wanna I wanna help you. I wanna I wanna be an encouragement to you. So somehow today, my desire is for you just to remember the great times, and 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 if I can just say to you not. Not be so sad, but allow the joy that you shared with your mother on this earth, how many ever uh, years that you had her, uh, just allow that joy to, to override the sorrow that you feel without her. That, I, I hope that makes sense, and I, and, and I, I, I hope you receive these words from the Spirit that I am trying to present them to you. I just want this to be a, a happy day for you as, as best. And I know, and I know some really struggle with with this day. I I, I I'd like to say I understand. I don't totally understand. I have my mom yet still with me. But I just felt like telling you, just just rejoice and and remember the joyful and the good times and 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 and, and those things and try your best to allow those joyous times to override any pain and sorrow that you might feel. And I'm going to pray that specifically for you right now. God, in the wonderful name of Jesus, I am praying to all those moms under the sound of my voice that have lost uh, their earthly mother, God, and she is no longer with uh, us and with them. I am asking that you would bring a peace. I am asking, God, that you would bring a strength. I am asking that you would bring a comfort. God, I, I, I know it's a time of sadness to, to a degree. Every Mother's Day is going to be like that, God. And I understand, Lord, but I'm asking you right now in the name of Jesus to let every mom under the sound of my voice that has lost her mom, to let there be joy, to let there be comfort, to let there be peace today, to let there be strength. In the name of Jesus, I know it's not going to take away all sins, but I just pray, God, that there could be more joy today than sadness. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. Thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you today. God bless you this morning. Amen. Praise God. I want to just make just a few announcements, if I may. Remember prayer on Tuesday uh, of this week. Uh, uh,
ladies prayer Tuesday morning, uh, 10 a.m., a men's prayer uh, Tuesday at 6 p.m., and so uh, please be mindful of that. Wednesday, Bible study, uh, prayers at 6.30. Bible study begins at 7. Our, our prayer chain on Friday. Thank you so much. It's been it's been going awesome. We've had uh, so many fill-out prayer shifts, and we've had several uh, shifts that have more than one person praying, and, and uh, so we are thankful for that. So let's remember that. Amen. And then our drive-through prayer this Saturday. Sister Joy has done just a great job. She's uh, made out a little uh, a map-like deal that is going to be on our Facebook page, hopefully uh, by the end of this day. And uh, we'd like you just to take a peek at that. And uh, uh, But it gives you all the instructions that I gave you the other day and just in picture form, and it's really awesome. And, and uh, we want you to invite friends. We want you to invite neighbors. We want you to invite family, people that uh, you might want to, uh, uh, that want to just just drive through our prayer line. Amen. And uh, we just want to pray over you and uh, uh, praise God and, and just and just have just a brief period of, of, of fellowship with you. And, and uh, I'll be at social distancing with masks and rubber gloves and, and you and your cars with the windows rolled up. And, but uh, I just I, I just pray that it can be a an outreach tool. And I, I believe some of the ladies are going to be uh, preparing some little bag lunch type things. And so if any of our friends uh, uh, that normally are in the parking lot are, are, are there, we want to just be able to give them a sandwich and something to drink and, and uh, let them know that we, that we are willing to uh, pray for them. Amen. So we'll, if you have any questions, just please, you can contact myself or better, really contact Sister Joy. Amen. I, I have not heard anything from anybody. I assume uh, you got the link. I sent uh, all of our young people, uh, a link Friday uh, to the Maryland, D.C. District Youth Service on Friday night. I, I was not even aware. Maybe I missed something. I just happened to see it on Facebook. And Brother James Wilson uh, led some worship. And then Brother uh, uh, Capitella, I believe I'm saying his uh, name right, uh, preached just a wonderful message. And young people, I, I sent it to all of you that I have phone numbers for. If you have not listened to this service, I'm asking you to listen to it. My brother Capitella just preached an incredible message on prayer. And I pray you're not sick of hearing about prayer. Because I'm going to just tell you again, without a consistent prayer life, uh, uh, it's, it just ain't going to happen for you. There, there, there will be no long-lasting anointing. There, there may be spurts, and there may be, and, and, and you may be able to get by on some of your own talents and abilities for a while. But unless there is a, a genuine prayer life, and he just does an incredible job. I'm asking you to listen to this. Amen. It'll be a great blessing to you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Uh, also this week, Sister Sherry Smith sent me a Save Our Children a video clip. I am going to be uh, sending that out to you, and uh, praise God, and uh, I feel like I'm in Hollywood here. <laughs> that may work good there as long as my wife's able to read her notes, praise God. But we got a lights, camera, and action going on, but I'm going to send you that video clip uh, to you this week, and so uh, that doesn't work. Amen. Praise God. And so you be ready to receive that. Well, I'll be honest, we're getting ready for the word of the Lord. And uh, praise God, Brother Alexander, we already took the offering yesterday. Uh, uh, or as, as they let, obviously, you know by now, we have to uh, pre-record the, the worship part uh, of uh, our service. But very, very soon, we're expecting perhaps even this week, our piece of equipment that is going to alleviate that. And uh, we're going to be able to do, do the entire thing uh, uh, live stream, and uh, we're, we're excited about that. But uh, I, I appreciate my wife so very, very much. And uh, um, appreciate her willingness to come and uh, speak today. And to me, this is, this is more than just tradition. This is more than just something that we try to do every year. It's more than just to give me a break that I don't have to preach on Sunday morning. And, uh, I'm going to tell you most of the time if I'm in church, I almost just sit and preach. Uh, but I, I believe she's heard from the Lord today and, and uh, I want her to come and uh, 
uh, when we got here today. And I'm, well, I'll let her share uh, some things with you. But uh, God bless you. If you'd like to just stand with us, maybe, and uh, I bring my sister Adams, the first lady of, of our church, and my wife, and mother to uh, Joshua and Jared, grandmother to Brooklyn and Jackson, and uh, I bring her to this pulpit today. God bless you, sweetie. Uh, Praise the Lord, church, and happy Mother's Day to the best women in all the world, the best mothers in all the world here in Abundant Life Tabernacle. Um, it's been a testful day so far. Uh, I do appreciate the things my husband said because uh, I understand with those that have lost their mom, I lost my mother at night, and unfortunately don't have a lot of memories but I do believe there are many of you that have wonderful memories um, that you can smile about and laugh about and I want you to enjoy that thinking of your mom today I want to get right into speaking and uh, I'm not talking as much are speaking just to our moms as much as I'm speaking for them. First scripture in Genesis 35, 16, and 17, the end of verse 16 says, And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, for now thou shalt have another son. Every woman that's given birth has experienced pain. Those few and probably far between that have not experienced necessarily the pain at that time, I'm sure you have experienced pain later down the road. Pain in the heart. With my son Joshua, I was in labor from 7 o'clock that morning to 10.58 that night. Jared was more kind to me, and I was just in labor from 7 to about 11 o'clock that afternoon. But it was popular uh, when I gave birth not to take anything. And uh, they said it was better for the child not to give you any kind of pain medication. Uh, I assume they knew what they were talking about. I don't know how much better it was for me, but there's something about seeing that baby and there's an overwhelming sense of love and protection that comes on a mother. And there's something in there that makes her feel like she will always be there for you. We bring you home from the hospital, all sweet and cuddly. Still that new smell, you know that baby smell? Johnson & Johnson baby lotion. Oh, I love that smell. And they bring us, they, we bring you home and that starts every four hour feedings. And that, that was not necessarily for Josh. Jared, again, was kinder. I don't know that my kids will hear this today, but Jared was kinder. He did do the every four hours. Josh was every hour, every half hour, every two hours if we were lucky. Sometimes he just wanted to get up and look around at the house and make sure he knew where he was, where he lived, I guess. And it's those times that they start learning to crawl and walk and talk. And my older brother always said, you want him to walk and talk so you can tell him to sit down and shut up. But they're going through those times and it's the boo-boo years where they get all these boo-boos and you're kissing every boo-boo from Dan to Beersheba and saying in Jesus' name. And you say it so much you honestly wonder, is Jesus thinking I've got to change my name? But she wouldn't trade it. She wouldn't trade it. And oh, believe me, when you get older you realize you want some of those years back. But she wants you to know 
at that early age that she's there for you and that she's going to protect you and be there for you. Then comes the terrible twos, and whoever came up with that never had a child. I can tell you that right now. Because it doesn't stop at twos. It's threes and fours. And it's the time they're spilling every liquid ever known to man all over the house. It's those potty train times, and that's loads of fun and no pun intended. And the time of reading bedtime stories and giving them baths, and in many cases going off to work and feeling that immense feeling of guilt as they reach for you, as you drop them off, and they're trying to grab for you and, and say, Mommy, don't leave me. And all that guilt comes in, and you're just hurting so bad inside because you had to drop them off for a few hours to go work and help pay bills. Then it's off to school. And as my husband loves to tell the story where you're chasing the school bus and thinking that child had the audacity to hit my son. There's PTA meetings and Little League and soccer and every sporting event ever known to man. I, I think they've even got tiddly winks in there and competitions for that and gymnastic, gymnastics and music lessons. And it's the time where you start helping the child with their homework and you go to that table at night, you've come home from work or had it, having a busy day and you're sitting down with them to help them with their schoolwork and you're trying to remember how to do geometry and algebra. And you're thinking to yourself, did they do any schoolwork in school that day when school's in? And uh, we want him to talk about the homeschooling days because my boys, Josh and Jared, would tell you some stories, and they love to tell them. It's funny, yesterday Braxton FaceTimed us a couple of times. He's getting antsy. He wants us to get there. Uh, he told us he doesn't like to know when we're coming. He likes for it to be a surprise so he doesn't have to wait on us to get there. But as he was talking to me yesterday, he said, Gigi, you're teaching me Monday, my schoolwork. And he got real close to the camera of the phone. He said, And I said, well, you better check with your daddy. I said, I homeschool daddy. And there were days like that. He said, I know, but you going to treat your kids one way and your grandkids another way. Oh, grandmothers, I know you're going to enjoy that. Because that is very true. During these years that you're growing up and living at home with mom and dad, mom's trying to instill in you a love for Jesus. Not just with her words, but with her actions. When you see her in her Bible or at her prayer time and in her prayer closet, she's trying to be that example. Does she do everything right? Of course not. A thousand times no. I made so many mistakes as a mom. To me, I did. And we all have probably too many that we would even want to mention. There's times we've had to apologize for our mess ups. And moms, I hope that you're not above that because we're just people. We're just human beings. And whether we're tall people, short people, little people, big people, we make mistakes, and there's times we have to say, I'm sorry. See, she just wants you to know that she's there, just a phone call away. She may be physically close by because she's just trying to teach you about Jesus. She wants your household to have the peace of God in it. She knows that if she can instill in you to live for Jesus and give your life for him, it won't make everything perfect. It won't take every bad situ situation away. But it's a whole lot easier when you're living for Jesus. It's a whole lot easier knowing you have him to call on. There's mothers I've known that have stayed in loveless marriages for their children's sake. I hope none of you ever have to do that. 
I think that's so sad. But she didn't think of herself. She thought of those children. And she would stay in that marriage because she felt like it was better for them and in their best interest, even though it wasn't for hers. Then we come to college years. You know, college party, college party for some. Can't tell the difference. Are those, uh-oh, I got pregnant years, or I got someone pregnant years, or those early marriage years, the adult years. Don't call me, I'll call you years. I've got my own life and family years, and of course, that's understandable. It's the circle of life. Could you do this for me, years? I need you to pick up the kiddos from school, years. Could you watch the kids tonight, years? I, I need to borrow some money, years. You're not the boss of me anymore, years. But you know what? You don't even have to fear, never give it a thought. She's still going to be there for you. There's something built in here in the heart of a mother. She's going to be there. She may get tired both physically and mentally and emotionally. She may get her feelings hurt and she may feel used at times. But she will be there for you. She will be there for you. And she wants to always be that part of your life because, see, you were literally a part of her life. This may seem like an odd statement, and I'm really just talking about moms today and for moms to remind you whether you're young today, whether you're an adult in your mom's life. I just want to remind you of a few things. And also the moms. And this may seem odd, but there's a story I always think about on Mother's Day. And I believe there's something we can learn from this mother. And it's the mother, Rizba. Before I talk to you about her, I want to tell you a short little story. A rabbi stood on a hill overlooking a certain city. The rabbi watched in horror as a band of Cossacks on horseback suddenly attacked the town, killing innocent men, women, and children. And some of the slaughtered ones were his own disciples. Looking up to heaven, the rabbi exclaimed, Oh, only our God. An astonished student that was standing nearby him said, But Master, if you were God, what would you do differently? The rabbi replied, If I were God, I would do nothing differently. If I were God, I would understand. And sometimes things like that happen. And we don't understand. And that's what it is in 2 Samuel chapter 21. It tells a story about this mother named Rizba. And Rizba maybe was standing on a hill one day there in Israel and watching the execution of seven men. You see, Joshua had promised to live a peaceful life with the Gibeonites. But Saul had murdered many of them during this region, attempting to annihilate them. And because of this, Israel was going through a famine for three years consecutively. And when David went to God, he said, he told David why. It's because of how Saul broke that vow with the Gibeonites. And so David went to the Gibeonites and he said, what can I do to make things right? And the Gibeonites asked for seven of Saul's offspring. And what David did, he took two of Saul's sons by Rizba. She was a concubine for Saul. And five of his step-grandsons, really, by Saul's daughter, Michael, that she raised. It's not hard to imagine the suffering that Rizba must have felt. I'm sure her body convulsed with sorrow. You would have thought she would have turned away from that side, but she didn't. She took sackcloth, she spread it over a rock, 
and she took something and she fanned the fowl of the air off of her dead sons. She would not allow them to touch her dead sons. She kept the beast of the field away. And she did this until the harvest, till the first rains fall. And historians, I can't say if this is true, but historians say it, that that was from mid-April to early October. She couldn't bury her grief as long as she saw her sons hanging there. So somebody brought word to David what she was do doing, and David ordered that the remains of those that were executed to be buried. And he ordered Saul and his son Jonathan, their bones to be brought back and to be buried. And then the famine ceased. Then, after he saw what Rizpah had done, after he had seen the consistency and the tenacity of that woman, Mr. Sheridan, remember the little hands? I'm courageous. I'm not going to stop. That was Rizpa. Mothers, there are some that have dead children spiritually. They're spiritually dead. Or maybe your child's not dead, but they are allowing the enemy to peck away at their spiritual man or woman and peck away at it. But we as spiritual Rizpas must get our fist in the air and fan off the foul of the enemy and the beast of the enemy. We've got to do it. We do it by fasting and prayer and intercession. But we've got to do it. This mother did that for literally dead bodies. We've got to do it for our children that are alive physically, but they are not alive spiritually. Because I believe I speak for every mother in this church and every true Christian mother in this world. The most important thing that we can do for you is put Jesus in your life. Do we want you to finish school with a 4.0? Yes. Do we want you to go to college and get your master's or bachelor's and, and have a wonderful, fulfilling job? Of course. Does she want you to have a success, successful business? That you can be able to provide for your family? Of course she does. Does she want you to find that, that special mate that will help you to be a better person and that loves God and that can raise her grandchildren up in the church more than anything? She wants that. But she knows more than these things. You need Jesus. More than stuff. More than stuff. More than things. You need Jesus. More than stuff, more than things, even more than people, you need Jesus. Because see, she knows there's a life after death, and it's eternal. And the temporal is just not even, it's incomparable to the eternal. She may not have always been able to buy you those things that you wanted. But listen to me, she goes without food because she fasts for you. She goes without sleep because she's getting up in the middle of the night praying for yeah. you. There's no price that can be put on that. No price that can be put on that. Please believe me, young children, old children, middle-aged children, you are loved. You are greatly loved. Romans 13, 7 speaks about rendering to all their dues. Honor to whom honor. And so I want to honor our mothers today. One of the greatest presidents in the history of the United States said, all that I am or hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Abe Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln said that. His mother was there. She instilled in this man Christian values. It's been stated that life didn't come with a uh, um, a man. It came with something far greater. It came with a mother. <laughs> I thought that was good. Thank you, Jesus, for our mothers today. 
Mothers, please realize how valuable you are, not only to your family, but also to your society. Good mothers are so valuable. There was a great king, the son of a great king. He was powerful and supreme. People bowed in his presence. They obeyed his command. He had great authority. His name was Solomon. Where was Solomon's mother? Solomon's mother was there for him. And he honored her for being there for him. In 1 Kings 2.19, Bathsheba went to King Solomon to speak to him for Ab Abonijah. And the king arose to meet her, bowed before her. Josh and Jared, I want to see some of that today. And sat on his throne. Then he had a throne set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right. Authority. Yep. Authority. She sat on his right. He bowed before his mother. Even brought forth a throne for her. I'm not talking about a, a toddler. A primary age child or a teenager. Not even a high schooler. I'm talking about a king. He respected his mother. Let me tell you where mothers rank in God's eyes. She was compared to rubies in the book of Solomon. And remember, the word of God is by inspiration. She was compared to rubies. Because that woman wasn't just a virtuous woman and priceless. She was a mother. She was a mother. In Proverbs, she was a mother. And I want to read that passage, starting with verse 10. And this is the RGTA version, Rebecca Gelfhorn Adams version. Is there anyone who can find a pure, righteous, and honorable wife and mother? She's worth more than you or anyone could ever afford. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly add to his life. She will not hurt him or slow him down, but help him in any way she possibly can. She makes sure that her husband and children's clothes are washed and clean and ready to wear. She goes to the grocery store, picks the food that her family will eat off the shelf, puts it into the shopping cart, stands in the line at the checkout, puts the groceries up on the conveyor belt. Sometimes she has to bag them herself. She puts all the groceries in the car, car, takes it out of the car, hauls it into the house, then she carefully puts it in the fridge and cabinet where it belongs. And gets it out and cooks it. There are times she is the first one out of bed so she can have some sort of breakfast and make lunches or dig the change out of the bottom of her purse to give to her children to buy their lunch. She plans her day's work because she does have a she doesn't have a maid servant to do it for her. She has a shrewd, she has a shrewd businesswoman. She's like a shrewd businesswoman, taking care of her family the best she can in every way she can. She tries to be energetic and strong, a hard worker. She watches for bargains and clips coupons, shopping at discount stores. There you go, Sarah. She's normally the last one in bed. Her hands are busy mending clothes or taking them to someone that knows how to mend. She doesn't mind lending a helping hand to those in need. Even though she may not like the winter, she doesn't fear it because she has nice warm clothes for her children. She buys her own bedspread if her husband will allow it. Everybody knows her husband because he sits around with his peers and his friends. She sometimes makes crafts to see, sell, or go around and picks up furniture and cleans it up and sells it. There you go, Sister Socks. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She puts her trust in God. When she speaks her words are wise and she uses kindness when she gives instruction. She is always watchful at what goes on in her household. She does not want laziness around her. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many well-known women who have won Pulitzer Prizes, Oscars, and Emmys. But you surpass them all. You surpass them all. Charm is deceptive. And beauty does not last, but a woman who reverences the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward for all she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. 
That's my horse. Proverbs 31 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? 31 28, her children arise and call her blessed, her husband, and also he praises her. The ruby is mentioned as one of the 12 precious stones created by God when he created mankind. The ruby has been called the Lord of Gems. It adorned Aaron's breastplate and was a symbol of Judah. In ancient times, rubies were considered more valuable than diamonds. In 16th century, they were valued eight times higher than other stones. That's what God thought of a woman and a wife and a mother. A virtuous woman. The Bible compares mothers to rubies in an effort to set the value at its pinnacle. To let the reader know there's nothing more valuable or that has more worth for her price as far as the rubies. Be honest, the Bible shows even deeper revelation of the value of a mother because the word mother is used 245 times in the Bible. And the strongest concordance, it literally means the bond of the family. In other words, a mother is the glue that holds the family together. There was reasons I almost took that out. I know some are hurting today. But what does a mother do? What are her jobs? I got on my phone and I started asking Brother Google if he could help me out. And I'm going to name just a few. Personal shelf, housekeeper, taxi driver, hairstylist, keeper of secrets, family therapist, laundry expert, teacher of the ABCs 1, 2, 3, I thought of Michael Jackson, finance manager, potty trainer, lifeguard, personal assistant, personal shopper, PTA representative, Play date coordinator, janitor, judge mom, <laughs> errand runner, runner, tour repair service. I love this one. Search and rescue. Search and rescue because we know. I, I would love to tell you a saying my family has about when you can't find something, but I will not. But but a mother can find stuff that Others, I will just say others, cannot find when it's right in front of them. It goes on, boo-boo fixer, kiss and hug expert. I love this one, PhD in reverse psychology. Blanket fort engineer. Can you imagine? Can you imagine life without, without all this? What is the true value of a mother? A mother works as many as 90 hours a week. The job description defies logic, and she's on call 24-7. Someone summed it up. They, they went through being a nanny, cleaning service, taxi driver, personal shopper, financial assistant, lawn officer, chef, laundry tech, just to name a few, and they came up with this figure, $80,548 and two cents. The two cents I added because I just wanted to add sense. But let's remember there's no sick leave with child care that normally comes with somebody that makes $80,000 a year. There's no paid time off. There's no 401k. All the incentives that someone makes when you make $80,000 a year is not part of this deal of being a mom. And that doesn't even count I didn't mention the most important things, instilling a love and a reverent fear. And you heard me correct, a reverent fear, because we're missing that a lot in our society today. We need to have a reverence for God, a reverence. It's not counting discipline that, contrary to what you believe, my kiddos out there, it's not something she loves to do, that discipline, uh -uh. but it's something that's got to be done. Loving us unconditionally, unconditionally didn't include that. Plotting on the third row of the second grade play, or tears of joy at a graduation wedding. Trying to give the best advice she can to a shaky marriage. Loving them when they are 
in the worst kind of sin and consistently validating the lives of the children. What is the price of a mother's love? Washington Irving wrote, the love of a mother is never exhausted, it never changes, it never tries. It endures through all, in good repute and in bad repute. In the face of the world's condemnation, a mother's love still lives on. She's right there. She's always there. Maybe a phone call away, but she's always there. She may have to call you back, but she's always there. Of course, I've got to mention Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was a constant part of Jesus' life, from the cradle to the cross. She really was. What did she do for Jesus? She urged Jesus to do what was right. Remember the water you turned into wine? That wasn't some great miracle in my book, but for some reason that was the right thing to do at a wedding where people were going to be embarrassed. Elizabeth said of Mary in Luke 1, 25, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. She had faith in God. She lived a faithful life. She took Jesus to church. She taught him. Proverbs 1.8, and I, I, I would encourage you to keep Proverbs always in your Bible reading. Um, I can't get enough of it. I've read through it already this year, and I've gone, I've gone back, and so I've just recently read this again. Proverbs 1.8, forsake not your mother's teaching. Back at Timothy 1 and 5, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and in thy mother Eunice, it went down the line. My sisters raised me, every single one, but my one sister that's just above me, Teresa, all my other sisters, I lived with them at some time in my life, and they all had a part of my life. Because they instilled things in me. My sisters lived for God and they instilled things in me. Bible reading, prayer. They really did. I, I can't remember memories of my mom because she was sick so long. But I remember the things of my sister and the things they instilled in me. And I am truly grateful for that. She searched for him when she thought he was lost. I wonder what would have happened if the prodigal son had a mother that would have searched for him. But no mother's mentioned in that parable. I guarantee you she would have done something. Mary stood with Jesus at Calvary when nearly everyone else deserted him. Jesus acknowledged her and provided for her. Even though he was going through a torturous death, he thought of his mother. He did not forget her, and she did not forget him. Of the last 11 words that Jesus spoke before his death, seven concerned his mother. With the weight of the world on his shoulders, he interrupted the salvation of mankind to make his mother, to make sure his mother was taken care of. John 19, 26 and 27. My husband told me I wouldn't be able to keep your attention long. I, I'm not sure how long I've been. I'm sorry. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to that disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Just how valuable is your mom to you today? What is a mother worth? A mother's priceless. Mother, your child needs you. Your family needs you. Your home needs you. Your church needs you. And this world needs you. You are priceless and invaluable. There's nothing like our mothers. And kiddos, whether you're 60, 65, or you're 4, 2, 18, 20, whatever, just know I'll love you for always.
I love, I like you for always. I love you forever. And as long as I'm living, my baby, you be. There's something about a mother's love. God was so gracious, so gracious and kind to give us mothers. When all of you, if you've got a mother alive today, please love your mother. Give her special attention this day. I know this isn't the type of talk that would make somebody run to the altar, but I just want to make you aware of your mother today and appreciate her. And I, I meant to say, girls, I I walk in I walked in here this morning and there was all these packages on the pulpit for what? They were all mine. Yeah, blooms and I lost them there. And I haven't got to open one single thing. And I probably won't get to till I get home because I had to take them home. But I will, and whoever got me something, thank you, thank you, thank you. There were some that brought things to my house, and I thank you for those. I thank you for your kindness to me. Any kindness that you ever show me, I promise I appreciate it. And not just the women, but her, Jonathan, Joseph, Kira, Savannah, Sarah, Tyler, uh, Stephen, um, Help me, I don't want to forget anyone. The Sox kids, Joy's children, Maya, Dominique, Tyler King. I want you to put your hand on your mom right now and don't think I can't see you. I can see you. Put your hand on your mom and let's pray together for our mothers today, okay? And let's thank the sweet, sweet God of heaven that he gave us mothers, that he thought of us that much to give us mothers. Noah, you pray for mommy today. Anybody else? I'm so sorry. I, I don't want to forget anybody. All of you solid children, you precious kids that I love, you just raise your hands to heaven and thank the Lord that you had your mother that many years. And you that have lost your mom, do you thank the Lord that you had her as much as you did? Every one of you. Let's not forget, okay? Let's not forget. Let's pray together. Amen. Jesus, I appreciate you today. You are my best friend in all the world. I'm thankful, God, that you are mindful of me. That you are mindful of me, God. That you blessed me so abundantly. I thank you for my church family today, God. I pray that you will bless every mother under the sound of my voice. My daughter-in-law is a mother, Sarah. God bless them today, oh Lord. Every mother, God, just in something give her strength. She needs strength for this journey. She needs guidance. She needs wisdom. I've noticed in your word when you talk about wisdom and understanding, it's always in the female gender. So this woman that you've created, we need your wisdom. We need understanding, God. Help us, Lord, to carry what we need to carry to help our families find you, oh Lord. We always stand in need of you, oh God. We stand in need. In the name of the Amen. Lord Jesus, in the name Amen. of the Lord Jesus, let your sweet Amen. spirit enter Amen. into every home, oh God. Amen. I believe Sister Yolanda's girls are there with her today, Lord. Let them be praying for her today. Sister Rhonda's children, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, just bless our families today, oh God. We cannot make it. Without you, we wouldn't even want to, Lord, would not even want to. Just bless our families today, oh God. I will give you all the praise and all the glory in the wonderful name of Jesus. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Brighton in Brooklyn, I hope you pray for your mama. I forgot to mention you. If not, you get over there and pray for her right now. Sister Thelma's grandchildren, if you're there with her, I sure hope you pray for her. If not, you pray for her now, okay? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord bless you today, church. God bless you.
Praise God. Hallelujah. If that didn't keep your attention, something is wrong. I, I have heard a lot of Mother's Day messages. I've preached a lot more than I've heard. I've heard her speak several times on Mother's Day. Never in my life have I heard anything from myself or anybody else as, as I, don't, I don't even know the adjective that is, well, you know the adjective that's coming to my mind? That is as grand, G-R-A-N-D, as this word was today. And I, oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. And those of you that, that, that have a privilege to have a mom that's in heaven today, just continue to, to uh, uh, pass on those virtues that she passed on to you. Continue to pass them on to your children and to your grandchildren. In the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. I'll be honest, I, I rode to church just kind of wanted to be or looking forward to when it was not looking forward. I rode to church basically thinking, you know, I don't even know how to say it. But I sort of feel like that now. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you, moms. I'm going to tell you, I, outside the Holy Ghost, Brother Alexander, the mother has to be the greatest thing. Now, I, I thought of your mom. Uh, I mentioned something to my wife. She's always, she's always putting such kind things on Facebook responses to them. She, she responds to my children when they put something on Facebook. She, you know, I, I I, I just appreciate that. And, and uh, I, I said, mentioned that to my wife uh, this morning or yesterday. And, and just, hey amen. So many of you have been so, so kind. All of you, all of this church has been so kind to my children. And you've put up with my grandchildren. And thank you so much. I, I would ask it. And, you know, we have been very, very mindful of this pandemic and we've been very obedient to it. And, uh, I guess to some degree we're, we're kind of breaking the law today. I guess if we get stopped going across the bridge, we can tell them we're just going to go to the beach and walk. I think we're allowed to do that. But if you would just, uh, we, we have prayed. We have not felt uncomfortable about going. And uh, I don't know who all my children have been around. I don't know who all my grandchildren have been around. And, and, and we, we, we've been mindful and careful of this, but uh, we, we could use these couple of days and uh, would you just please pray that God will protect us and, and that God will keep us from any, any harm. Not just COVID-19 but from any harm. And uh, God bless you. We'll be in touch with you. Amen. I love you today. God, thank you so much for this incredible word. Bless our moms today. I, I pray for our, our fathers and uh, our husbands, Lord, and our, our, our sons today. We will just treat our mothers, Lord, like uh, like the ruby that they are. Amen, in Jesus' name. Please, and one more thing, Sister Renee, first of all, my wife ain't going to like this, but get this on face, our Facebook page ASAP, please, and then have a good Mother's Day after that. And and would you would you share this with your children? Would you share this? Uh, send it to your children. They, they, they may not watch, but who knows, they might. Your, your children need to hear this. How many of you would love for your children to hear? Share it with them. Send it. God bless you. Thank you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Praise God.